Have you watched The Front Room? I hope not, because it's bad. In The Front Room, we have Belinda and Norman, a married couple who invite Norman's stepmother, Solange, to move in after Norman's grandfather passes away. Now, Norman is very hesitant. Actually, Norman doesn't want this at all, because as he reveals to Belinda in front of us, the audience, um, his stepmother was actually quite abusive. She's an overzealous Christian who um, abused him, essentially, when he was a child. He also reveals to Belinda that she would not approve of their relationship, a.k.a. she is racist. Belinda pish poshes this because she is a Black character written by white people and says maybe Solange has changed. And so she downplays Norman's worries and says, let's let her come live with us. There's also a financial incentive to this. Um, and so Solange moves in and just like Norman said, she starts taking over the house. Mind you, part of the reason why she's taking over the house is because for way too long, um, at the beginning and middle, Belinda keeps like excusing her is like, well, like, let's let her, you know, she's alone now and blah, 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 blah. So Solange is taking over the house. She starts terrorizing Belinda. Belinda is pregnant and, you know, she has the baby over the course of the movie, but Belinda, but Solange um, is just taking over and kind of trying to push Belinda out. The front room is not scary. It is disgusting. It is gross. That's what I mean by disgusting. It is gross. There's a lot of bodily fluids, bodily excrement, and I think also some bile too. That's what makes it nasty. It's not scary. There's a little bit of um, a supernatural element that doesn't amount to anything. The best part of this movie is Katherine Turner, who plays Solange. She is incredible. She is not enough of a reason to go to see this movie if you haven't yet. But if you are interested in seeing this movie, save this, come back to it after you do, and we can lament together. I'm about to go into why this movie is so freaking bad and irritating. So the main thing that sticks with me um, almost 24 hours after seeing this movie is that Belinda's race has a function. Her blackness has a function. It's a plot point, And the function is racism, right? Um, there is no good to her being black. Belinda has no black friends. She doesn't interact with anybody black. She is the only black person in this movie. Meanwhile, Norman, her white husband, has his white stepmother, and his white stepmother has her white church community, who we see twice um, over the course of the movie. But Belinda, even the person she interacts with at work, is white. The whole point of her being black is racism. And the racism that is featured has nothing to do with Belinda. It is to show us how scary, my throat is like getting on my nerves. <clears throat> it's to show us how scary and it's to build up Solange's character. Look how horrible she is. Not only is she an evil stepmother and an evil mother-in-law, she is racist to boot. It's all about Solange. Belinda is indignant about the fact that Solange is racist. She is righteous about it. She says some things that are you know, lifted from Twitter discourse. But she's not indignant enough to enact some self-preservation because, again, she is a Black character written by white people. Belinda has this whole thing about goddesses, right, because she did have a stillbirth. Um, and so she, you know, believes in goddesses, has goddess statues, but the goddess that she name drops is Inanna, who was a, or is a Sumerian goddess. Where is Sumeria in this day and age? It is Southern Iraq. Here are some black goddesses that they could have had, had her mention if they gave a damn about her actually being black, okay? So we've got Maru Lisa, goddess, goddesses of harmony and creation. Isis, you're part mem kabalion ti Isis. Isis, goddess of magic, motherhood, and fertility. They couldn't name drop Isis. Egyptian goddess. Egyptian mythology is like the only mythology that matters from the African continent. Uh, we've got Yemoja, goddess of sea and motherhood. We've got Hathor, goddess of love, beauty, and motherhood. Now, Belinda is canonically Haitian. So from Haiti, we've got La Sirene, we've got Ezuli Donto. Um, I bet money that the other half of, of her ethnicity is African-American. And while Hoodoo does not have gods and goddesses, 
you can have her go visit a conjure woman or a root worker. You see how I looked this up? They invested in the black character and in her blackness. But no, like I said, the point is just to heap racism on her that she's not really going to do anything about. At one point in the movie, Belinda becomes Solange's like literal servant. I won't say slave because I don't think that. But her literal servant, like a home health aide, head ass. She gets Solange's piss and shit on her. She walks around the movie at one point with dried shit on her collar and on her neck and even holds her baby. I don't know why she doesn't change. Other things that Solange does that doesn't make sense. Her pregnant black ass quits her job knowing that her husband is a public defender. Moving on to Norman and Belinda's actual relationship, like I said at the beginning, Belinda doesn't care about his trauma. There's an interesting lack of, and when I say interesting, I don't mean that it's actually interesting, but there is a lack, there is a carelessness in their relationship. So like I said, Belinda doesn't, doesn't care about his, his trauma. At the beginning, uh, Belinda shares with Norman that like, what if the baby doesn't have a heartbeat? What if they don't find a heartbeat because they had a stillbirth? And Norman's response is, oh, come on, I love you. Something along those lines. I wish I would have written it down after the movie ended, but it's something like that that makes me wonder, like, did you, did you hear what she said? It was very, like, stilted dialogue. There's some stilted dialogue in this movie. Other things. At one point, Norman wakes up because Belinda sleepwalks, and he sees that she's crying. Like, it's dark in the... She's standing up and she's crying. There, there are tears in her eyes. It's dark in the room, but there's enough light to see that she's been crying. I don't remember what the issue was. I think she had a dream about Solange doing something. And Norman's answer is, don't let her get to you. And then he rolls over and goes to sleep. I swear there was enough light for him to see there's tears in her eyes, but he just rolls over and goes to sleep. Like I said, he also lied to her about the type of family that he came from, um, about his stepmother being racist, about the fact that he was abused as a child. Um, to me, the lie about the racist stepmother and then what she went through, even though it was Belinda's idea for the woman to move in, what she went through in that house, in that house for me, it's, it's grounds for divorce. But like I said, uh, Belinda is simply not that type of black character. There's a hint of supernatural uh, in the movie, but it doesn't lead to anything. Because in the end, Belinda just smothers Solange with a pillow to take care of the problem. Which means that in the end, Solange was an overzealous, abusive stepmother and mother-in-law who terrorized her daughter-in-law with her bodily excrements. But in the end, she didn't really have any superna supernatural power in universe. That woo-woo stuff was just for us. Like the fact that her, uh, her belly healed mostly, like her, her C-section scar healed mostly, that was just for us. Solange didn't really do nothing for real. Uh, and ben, uh, Belinda just smothered her with a pillow. Problem solved. I give the movie one star. And I would give it zero, not even Catherine Turner's acting. Like, I would give it zero stars if I did zero stars. But I give her one star. If you went to see this abomination, do let me know what you think.